Well, I'm, I'm rather pessimistic, but the optimism, pessimism, I think, uh, have, a, have a strong psychological component. No one really knows, but um, but uh, but at the moment, it looks as if the destructive technologies are advancing more rapidly than the constructive. Uh, one of the destructive technologies, of course, is uh, burning of fossil fuels. That's, that's what's producing global warming. It's not, it's not a new technology, obviously, but what's new about it is that other new te technologies are enabling tremendous economic growth in what we used to call the third world. That tremendous economic growth is contributing to a tremendous increase in the amount of fossil fuel burning, which is creating global warming and uh, uh, reduction in uh, species diversity and so on. So that's very bad. And these um, dis more overtly destructive technologies, um, like nuclear, which is spreading, obviously, proliferating, and biological. And I haven't been too much talk about that recently, but in my book and subsequent thinking, the uh, advances in biotechnology are creating uh, uh, extraordinary weapon opportunities. So within, uh, within a few years, uh, it will be possible to synthesize the smallpox uh, virus which is the ideal terror weapon. And um, once it's and once it's synthesized, um, the uh, the opportunities for actually weaponizing it become uh, a very great because uh, there's a huge international biotechnology industry. It's not just the United States or in the developed world. Brazil, for example, has a huge biotech industry. So with many thousands of uh, skilled biologists and biotechnicians all over the world, the opportunity for the smallpox to get into the hands of some lunatic or some suicidal terrorist group, um, I think, are, are great and growing. And um, just, uh, you know, proliferation of, of antibiotics, which speed the evolution of, of bacteria and viruses, right? They respond so, um, to the, the challenge. So you get an emergence of more dangerous bacteria have been naturally selected uh, to uh, be immune to the uh, antibiotics. So all sorts of uh, dangers lurk. <laughs> Many people are working to try to contain them, but um, but if you think of the spread of bio, biological knowledge, and uh, no one is trying to control that, right? Um, so, um, you know, we have, we, we do have, there's res, there is government funded research on trying to develop new vaccines, broad spectrum vaccines, and so on, trying to anticipate possible epidemics either naturally caused or man caused and try to have uh, but you know that's very that's real catch up type of thing trying to anticipate all the possible um, lethal you know pathogens and, and developing vaccines in advance against them an example of how serious the problem is to develop a vaccine against a uh, a potential bioweapon, you have to develop the bioweapon as you make vaccines. Well, so then you're training all sorts of, you know, scientists and how to make a bioweapon. Some of them may turn out to be, you know, a biological unibomber. And biological weaponry um, is much uh, cheaper to create, much easier to create than uh, nuclear. I mean, there are no nuclear secrets anymore, but um, 
there's no trick to designing an atomic bomb, but the actual, the, the, the bottleneck is the enriched uranium or plutonium, and that's still difficult to come by. But, but uh, you don't have that kind of bottleneck in, in a biological area.